Hi all, I'm Gloria. I'm a museum ambassador at the ASU Art Museum, and today I'll be reading you The Pot That Juan Built by Nancy Andrews Goble. This is the pot that Juan built. Juan Quesada was born in Santa Barbara, Tutuqua, Mexico in 1940. When he was one year old, his family moved to Mata Ortiz, a village of dirt roads and adobe houses on the windswept plains of Chihuahua. It was there that Juan rediscovered the pottery making process of the Casas Grandes people, who had vanished from that part of the Mex from that part of Mexico 600 years ago. These are the flames, so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. Juan became a professional potter in the 1970s. Before that, he worked as a farm laborer, a, ra a railroad hand, a sharecropper, and even a boxer. He was never afraid of hard work and takes pride in using different methods and natural materials in his pottery making. Juan taught eight of his 10 brothers and sisters and many of his neighbors how to make pots. They all developed their own special styles. Juan's discovery changed Mato Ortiz from an impoverished village of poorly paid laborers into a prosperous community of working artists. These are the cows, all white and brown, that left manure all over the ground, that fueled the flame so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot the beautiful pot that Juan built. Juan's pottery is fired the traditional way, using dried cow manure for fuel. He gathers manure to, on the cattle range that surrounds the village of Mato Ortiz. In his experiments, Juan learned that manure from cows that eat grass, rather than commercial feed, burns at the best temperature to, burn, to turn his clay pots into perfectly fired works of art. That is the brush of the hair from his head that spreads the paint all black and red, that colored pot for all to admire. Before it was baked in a cow manure fire, the crackling flames so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot, that beautiful pot that Juan built. Juan makes paint out of local minerals such as black manganese and red iron oxide. He makes paint brushes from human hair. He says that some of his best brushes are fashioned from children's hair, especially his granddaughters. Since very little hair is used to make a paintbrush, no one minds giving Juan just a snip to design a pot. These are the rocks of the red and black brought down, for, brought down from the mountain on the burrow back to make into paint on black and red spread with the brush of hair from his head that colored the pot for all to admire before it was baked in the cow manure fire. The crackling flame so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. When he was 12 years old, while bringing firewood down from the hills of, on his burrow, Juan found his first post herds. They were pieces of broken pottery from the ancient Casa Grande city of Pequime, which was located 15 miles from present day Mata Ortiz. The posters inspired Juan to create something sim similar. Even though he had never seen a potter at work, Juan began experimenting with local materials. His mother declared that he was always covered in dirt or many colors from his experiments with minerals and clay. This is the tool that made that's made out of bone that rubbed the pot until it shone and glittered and glowed and glistened and glimmered and gleamed and beamed and sparkled and shimmered. To show off all the paints all black and red spreads with a brush of hair from his head that colored the pot for all to admire before it was baked in the cow manure fire. The crackling flames so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. After his clay pots dry, Juan polishes them before he applies the paint. To polish his pots, Juan uses animal bones, smooth stones, and, e and even dried beans. 
Animal bones are abundant because of the deer hunting and cattle ranching that helped feed the people of Monte Ortiz. Smooth stones are available in the Pal Palanganas River, which runs along the eastern boundary of town. Of course, dried beans can be found in any kitchen in the village. Here's a tortilla slap, slap, pat, pat, and the sausage so, and the sausage of clay so slick and fat that became the pot, imagine that. In the wink of an eye and the blink of a cat, before it was rubbed with a piece of bone over and over until it shone, to show off the paints all black and red, spread with a brush of hair from his head, that colored the pot for all to admire, before it was baked in the cow manure fire. The crackling flame so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. Juan Han builds all his pots. He begins by patting out a flat piece of clay he calls a tortilla, which, he, which becomes the bottom of the pot. He then rolls out the sausage-shaped piece of clay called a chorizo and presses it on the edge of the tortilla, pinching it and pulling it up to become the walls of the pot. Juan makes his pot in a small workroom behind his house, often in the company of chickens and his calico cat. This is the clay all squishy and white, dug in the hills from mor morning to night. To make their tortilla, slap, slap, pat, pat, and the sausage of clay so slick and fat that became the pot, imagine that, in the wink of an eye and the blink of a cat, before it was rubbed with a piece of bone over and over until it shone. To show off the paint all black and red, to spread with the brush of hair from his head, that colored the pot for all to admire before it was baked in the cow manure fire. The crackling flame so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. Juan says his painted designs look best on the Barro Blanco, a pure white clay he digs in the Sierra Madre Mountains above Monte Ortiz. He uses the ancient designs of Casas Grande's potters for inspiration, but he doesn't try to copy them. Juan never plans the decoration in, in advance. He lets the pattern overlap, develop as he paints on it on the clay pot. These are the ants that led the way and showed Juan a vein of special clay. The very best clay all squishy and white dug in the hills from the morning till night. To make, their, to make the tortilla slap, slap, pat, pat, and the sausage of clay so slick and fat that became a pot, imagine that, in the wink of an eye and the blink of a cat before it was rubbed with a piece of bone over and over until it shone to show off the panes all black and red spread with the brush of fine hair, of hair from his head that colored the pot for all to admire before it was baked in the cow manure fire. The crackling flame so sizzling hot that flickered and flared and fired the pot, the beautiful pot that Juan built. One day, while Juan was out searching for minerals and clay, he noticed a colony of ants burning with tiny cargoes of white material. Looking closely, Juan realized that the ants were transporting bits of clay from the underground up to the edge of the, to their anthill. So Juan dug in a hole near the anthill and unearthed a vein white of white clay the finest clay he had ever seen. This is a clock that, cr that crowed at dawn, that greeted the village and woke up one, to ride the range at break of day, gathering rocks and hunting for clay. The very best clay all squishy and white dug in the hills from morning till night to make their tortilla and sausage a place so slick and fat that became the pot, imagine that, in the wink of an eye and the blink of a cat, before it was rubbed with a piece of bone over and over until it shone, to show off the paint all black and red, to spread with the brush of hair from his head, that colored the pot for all to admire, before it was baked in the cow manure fire, the crackling flame so sizzling hot that flickered and flamed and fired the pot. Juan gave away his first pots as gifts to family and friends. Today, his work is exhibited in museums and art galleries all over the world. In 1999, Mexico, Me Mexico's president, Ernesto Zedillo, presented Juan with the National Arts and Science Award, the highest honor of an, for any artist in Mexico. Pope John Paul II received a 
Juan Caseta Pot as a gift from the people of Mexico. In spite of his fame and wealth, Juan cherishes most of his time he spends in solitude, exploring the hills above Mata Ortiz in search for minerals and clay. If you it is very quiet, Juan says, the voice of the ancient potters can still be heard. The beautiful pot that Juan built. Thank you for listening.